You know, you get it in all the movies where there's a classy gentleman. Sure, pour me some whiskey. Every Western I've ever seen, you have yourself some whiskey and bourbon. But what is it? Well, of course, it's a spirit that was not invented, surprisingly enough, here in America. Actually, the first, uh, first signs of spirits and whiskey and bourbon were in the 1400s, but it's made its way and become kind of a staple for those who enjoy a good spirit. And for those who do, tonight we are celebrating the Great American Whiskey Fair, Christian Nemi. Did I say that right? Yep. There you go, from Bourbon, Columbia. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? What is it about the bourbon and the whiskey? Is it, it's like this magic, it's like this alluring drink. Well, I mean, it's, it's steeped in a lot of history, mm -hmm. but also there's, it's, there's been such a huge resurgence in the past 10 years or so. Right. I mean, I think people finally are starting to turn away from, uh, I guess, the blandness of uh, the clear spirits, like sure. vodka, especially vodka. I mean, mm -hmm. vodka had its, its, its rise, and it's still pretty big, but um, it, it has a lot more character to it. And okay. so, and it's a, a truly American product. Uh, 1964, they passed some laws mm -hmm. calling it an American spirit, so it can't be made anywhere else but in right. America. So now we truly do own it. We do own it. Excellent. Yeah, so kind of like uh, France owns champagne. Sure. We own this. So let's talk about bourbon and whiskey, because you've got you know the bourbon blended whiskey, and you've got different kind of yeah, uh, well, connections. So what are the, the differences, and how do they do it together? Because I think, of course, of uh, Jack Daniels. So Okay, well, right. okay, so there, yeah, there is a difference between bourbon and uh, whiskey, mm -hmm. uh, but really the differences are, are rel relatively small. So for it to be bourbon, uh, the number one is it has to be 53% 53, 53 corn in the mash bill. Okay. Mash bill's your recipe. Okay. So you, it has to be 51% uh, corn, and that makes it, will make it a bourbon. Another, number two, has to be aged in new wood. Okay. And those are really the two biggest ones. There's a lot of people out there who say, well, it has to be made in bourbon Kentucky to right. be called bourbon. No, that's not true. It can be made anywhere in the United States. Actually, they're not even sure if the name bourbon came from that area sure. or it came from Bourbon Street in uh, Louisiana, Louisiana. Okay, where the the French speaking uh, natives down there really liked their brown liquors. Okay, so um, we aren't really too sure about it. So. Uh, other than that, uh, there's other than categories of it. Like to be called straight whiskey, it has to be aged for at least two years in that in a charred barrel. Okay. Um, to be called. And uh, that's what gives it the flavor, right? That that that. That's where you. Flavor. That is where you get. That, I mean, otherwise it's just straight corn whiskey. It's just a, basically moonshine. Right. Um, it's got a real kind of very sweet kind of corny type taste to mm -hmm. it. It's always fun to taste them. Uh, before they become this, okay, to kind of see where their bones are and what happens w through the aging process, and and everybody uses a different mash bill. Everybody uses uh, different chars inside their barrel to get a different flavor mm -hmm. profile, and that's why each one is different. You know, and, and older isn't necessarily better. Okay. Oh, so because you always think of that wine, you know, I know it ages well, and but things. it's the same with wine. It's like you know, just because wine is older doesn't necessarily make it better. Yeah, I've had some wine that I thought yeah, was, is when I, was, <laughs> I, would, I would get like the old like Bartles and James, like I'm going to store this for five or six yes. years, and I'd be like, oh my god, this is horrible. Yeah, really, I still have some in yeah. my in my cellar. <laughs> no, I would not. I just let it go, right. Kristen. I'd let okay. it go. <laughs> Oh well. So, so you got the blend too, because I think like like Jack Daniels is kind of a blend. Right? No, Jack Daniels actually um, the only difference between bourbon and Jack Daniels uh, and George Dickel, uh, and then there's a couple others, is they go through what's called the um, the Lincoln County process. Okay. So that makes it so the Lincoln County process is they'll take the bourbon after it's made, and then it's filtered through charred uh, through maple charcoal. Okay. So it mellows it, it a little bit. A little flavor yeah, it mellows it a little okay. bit more, and um, it then because just going through that filtering, it negates it from being called bourbon. Right. Which you know, back in the day, uh, before those rules were made, it was all over the place. Sure. What people really call no what people call bourbon. Sure. So it's like br every brown liquor probably. Right? Yeah, and they wanted to they wanted to differentiate themselves, so they sure. called themselves Tennessee whiskey. So gotcha. and now it's you know that's their their iconic brand. All right, man. We're well, gonna stick around. We got some more whiskey 101. Plus, talk about uh, just getting in here and tasting it for yourself, not through your TV. But tonight, you can do that. We'll tell you about that here in just a few minutes as we continue on uh, with the great American whiskey fair. Please stay with us. Good day, Columbia. Continue with Christian from Bourbon, and we're talking whiskey. Of course, the Great American Whiskey Fair is tonight at 701 Whaley. Have some whiskey 101. You can log on to Watch.com and get some links if you want to do your own exploration. But tonight is the big fair. We're talking over a hundred. A um, hundred different whiskeys yeah. that you can walk around and sample. A hundred different American whiskeys and bourbons. Wow, love it. So. I love it. 
So we've been learning back and forth about uh, the difference between whiskey and bourbon, and uh, I guess it's time to maybe just... Sure. You, yeah. you, you, I guess you learn through tasting. Guys are like tactile. We have to touch things to learn. So let's try to do that. <laughs> yeah, right. well, when it comes to bourbon, I really have to taste it. That's so right. what So what I wanted to bring today was uh, something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So this is from one of the craft distillers called Breckenridge okay. out of Colorado. Uh, up until just a few years ago, they uh, sourced all of their bourbon from Kentucky. Okay. And would just take it. They'd finish They'd finish it, and then they'd uh, bottle it. Well, now their distillery is online. Mm -hmm. uh, they started in 2009, so they've got four-year-old uh, bourbon coming out of their uh, stills, I mean, out of their barrels. And so... And, and what, is the, what is the proper classy way to drink bourbon? Is it, is, it, is it like that neat, or is it like with one ice cube? I mean, you hear all kinds of different things. Well, I'll tell you what. You drink bourbon the way you like to drink bourbon. However you, <laughs> however you, pre however you prefer to drink it Fair is the enough. way... Um, However, if you're going to buy a $60 bottle of bourbon, I mean, I would say that the, the best ways are either neat, like mm -hmm. this, or with a single ice cube or a splash of water to bring the proof down a little bit. Because okay. for a lot of people, this is going to be just a little too the much. That's not bad. That's pretty smooth, actually. Isn't that? And tasting is definitely some smoked yeah. oak in that, too. I like so that. you get a lot of like kind of toffee and caramel right. flavors, some like toasted pecan. I mean, this really is an art, kind of like drinking wine. You have a wine aficionado that yeah. really sips the wine and, and enjoys the yeah, flavor. Definitely, whiskey necessarily just to, to pound back. All exactly. The time. And the beautiful thing about bourbon and, uh, and all the whiskeys is that you find them in every price range, mm -hmm. all the way down from the teens. Uh, for, I mean, high quality stuff in the teens. Right. And of course, you can go all the way up to the hundreds if you get sure. into like the Pappy Van Winkles and such. Pa just the names are fun. Pappy Van Winkle. Pappy Van Winkle. Yeah. So. But uh, mm. they're fantastic ones in, uh, to get started with, mm -hmm. and I think the beautiful thing about the fair tonight is that it, this is going to give people an opportunity to try a lot of things if they're new to it. Right. So you'll be able to kind of, as you walk through and taste, you'll be able to figure out which ones you actually like, you know. Sure. And uh, but over a hundred different kinds. Yeah, with over a hundred. Not that you have to try them. every single yeah, yeah. one. Please but, don't. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's yes. try. We got a, just a few seconds left, Christian. Sure. What's that last one right okay, there? Okay. So the last one. So this is a um, this is Sazerac rye. Now this is a bourbon lover's rye because this okay. is when I said earlier that you have to have 51 percent corn mm -hmm. to make it bourbon. Well, this is 39 percent corn and 51 percent rye. Okay. So this is this is the. This is the uh, spirit of choice for the famed Sazerac cocktail. Sazerac. Yeah. Write that down. And that comes from New Orleans. Well, much more distinct flavor. That's more, I guess, smooth. Isn't that the same, um, that same smoked flavor for me anyway? Right. Well, this has a little bit of more, because of the rye, you get a little more spicy qualities mm -hmm. like cinnamon and yeah. nutmeg and... Yeah, just a little less, a little less that bite you get on the when yeah. you think of for uh, for whiskey. All right, guys. So the Great American Whiskey Fair is tonight, seven one Whaley, uh, kicking off at six o'clock. Tickets are uh, seventy five uh, for the general admission, one hundred twenty five for VIP. But again, at, VIP at that point, sold out. Open. Okay, well, there VIP you go. VIP is sold 75. out, and you can get the tickets at experiencewhiskey.com. Perfect. And we've got a link or at for the you door. And you go in and you can try and sample these. Of course, please, please drink responsibly, but certainly try and uh, if you want to become an aficionado tonight. And Christian, maybe yeah. uh, your keys to it. Think how classy that is. Yeah. We'll take a whiskey. Neat. Neat. There you go. As long as you want to be an international spy, you got to have this education tonight. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming in, my friend. Or a madman. Or th there you go. Mad or madman. Madman. Mad <laughs> we'll do some advertising on Madison Avenue. Guys, stick around. We got a lot more good day. Columbia on the way. Garrett Beamaw is going to be here. We have a full forecast coming up in about 15 minutes. Stay with us and enjoy. Cool.